So this is Robert and Michael from Transpera, and we're going to go over a, a quick overview of SPC charts in Visual KPI, uh, what they are, what SPC is, and how to set one up and configure it. So Michael, show us how that works. Okay, thanks, Robert. Well, in Visual KPI, uh, we have implemented SPC as a feature that's bound to a KPI. So that means that you, know, you first have to have a KPI, which you can just define with a name and an actual, and then you can configure it as an SPC chartable element. So normal KPIs do trends where there's time on the x-axis and the value on the y-axis of the KPI, and the limits are set by either dynamic reference to an interface or to a static value or, or a blank where there wouldn't be a, a limit. Uh, SPC, on the other hand, is a special type of trend and its limits are set by rules and the rules that you have some control over in our software. In fact, like everything, you have total control over it. If you want to do everything yourself, you, you can. So we go over here to the SPC section of the KPI configuration. And the first thing you'll see right there in the, in the first column is the is SPC column. That's going to tell our software whether to bother calculating all the SPC stuff for this KPI. And uh, it's, uh, it's good to not overuse this because the calculations are fairly intensive uh, and they involve a lot of uh, back and forth in the, uh, in the history doing calculations to, to calculate various things we're going to talk about. So at the outset here, I'd like to offer that SPC should be used sparingly uh, where you need it, but not in a blanket way. We've seen a, a fair amount of people just turn it on because it's uh, there and I'd like to encourage you not to do that. So uh, step one is what is SPC? It stands for Statistical Process Control. It's something that was developed, oh, 50 or 60 years ago uh, by a, a guy named uh, W. Edwards Deming. And he formulated a bunch of rules back then for stationary processes. And, and what that means is processes where the values uh, in time are not correlated with each other. So it would be things like lab samples that uh, are, are optimally used for, for SPC. Not something like uh, a temperature loop that's in feedback control, because then, then of course, the values are not uh, uncorrelated. They're, they're correlated very heavily by the control algorithm. So first step is to apply SPC correctly. And that's going to be to a, a signal that um, it doesn't matter the speed of the signal. It could be very fast samples or very slow samples, but the samples should not be correlated with each other. So you can just test uh, various ways to, to find if there's correlation or not. And you can either pre-process a signal to remove those correlations. For example, if there's some type of a, a trend or a, a cycle, a seasonal cycle, or a, a straight up uh, trend up or trend down, you can remove that prior to doing SPC by uh, making some equation outside of our software to do that. So anyway, when, when the value that you place in the actual column for KPI um, is used as an SPC, then we're going to treat it according to these rules. And we've implemented out of the many, many rules that are available, we've implemented the four most popular, uh, and these are the uh, Western Electric rules, and you can find the definition of what we have implemented by just clicking on the header in one of the rules. And you'll see that uh, the four most popular things are these symmetric rules around whether something is within or outside a three sigma limit, whether two out of three fall beyond the two sigma limit on the same side of the center line, uh, whether four out of five are, are beyond the one sigma limit on the same side. And the final rule is uh, are nine points on the same side, regardless of uh, what, whether they're above or below a sigma line. And uh, sigma stands for standard deviation. So one, two, and three standard deviations uh, in, a, um, in an uncorrelated process kind of make up a Gaussian distribution. So uh, another assumption that we've made here is that all the limits are symmetric. So you can see if you scroll down further in Wikipedia, there is a set of rules that apply to asymmetric control limits. This is not something that's going to be handled in our software. And remember, SPC software that does all these calculations and does hundreds of chart types uh, this is a standalone system. Typically, people that are very, very specialized will buy and apply to their, their lab data or whatever. And this is not what we're trying to compete with. We're just trying to do the old 80-20 rule to give you uh, what most people do most of the time and make that 
really simple. So, so, so Michael, let me see if I can get this right. Um, SBC in general is just a measure of whether you're in and out of control based on calculated limits of, uh, of what the, your actual data is doing, where a regular KPI has limits that are either static values that are set by someone or derived from some data source or something like that, but they are, they are not calculated automatically based on uh, the thing, and they're not meant to show in or out of control. So that's the difference, is that right? That's right, that's right. Typically, a KPI's limits are gonna be quality related, and an SPC limits will be control related. You know, is my process under control? And the reason that uh, that matters is that typically the processes that you apply SBC to are gonna be open loop, like a lab data sample. There's no real control algorithm or controller that's uh, closing the loop around the measured value in some valve or some other you know, damper. It's typically a person taking a sample and getting a value and putting it into some system like a lab, a lab data management system. So they are fundamentally different and, and the reason we can overload a KPI with SBC is that typically a KPI will not have both process limits and control limits. It will have one or the other. Great. And then so the 80-20 rule you mentioned is that there's really dedicated SPC packages out there that go nuts, essentially, giving every feature of SPC. And if, you're, if that's your life and that's what you do for a living, those are appropriate for you. For everyone else, this is a way to implement SBC rapidly, uh, make it easy, and, and on the user side as well, not require a staggering amount of deep training. Is that right? Exactly. That's exactly right. So with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at how a KPI might be turned into an SBC variable. Now, first thing you're going to do is for, go and study those rules to see which ones apply to you. And for each one of those rules in our software, you get to decide whether to ignore it or to apply it. And when you apply it, you get to decide which of the limits or statuses will be representing that particular violation. So for rule number one, you can choose to use, uh, for charting purposes, one of the existing states, or you can make a custom state. We have 10 of those that you can choose from. So some people go ahead and, and make custom SBC states for all four of these. Uh, and then they have an unambiguous uh, interpretation in their reports and in, in the screens. It's, it's not mandatory. You can just override an, an existing value. But once you've decided which uh, of these rules apply to you, then you have to decide uh, a few other things, but not very many. I mean, there's really only one other thing you have to choose, and that is the sample size. So on, on the KPI designer, every one of these uh, columns is going to have a um, kind of a mouse over that's going to tell you what's going on for each one of those things. Let's see if we've got that here. So, yeah, where's my mouse over text? Here we go. Click on there. Uh, oh, you have to click on it. So each one of these uh, columns is going to tell you what it's for. You, and, and in this case, if you want to implement all four rules, since one of them requires nine samples, well, the default minimum is going to be nine so that you can apply all four rules. You could choose to apply this to only the first two rules, in which case maybe you only need five. But this sample size is going to determine which data points and which values are lumped together or separated apart in order to make the determination of whether it's in control or not, uh, or violating a limit or not. So that's just an arbitrary thing that you decide, and, and you'll decide that based on some rules that, that you determine by reading about SPC and then deciding what your sample size should be. The larger the sample size, the slower moving your enunciation of a rule violation will be, but also the more reliable it will be. And then conversely, if you use a small sample uh, size, then you'll have a fast response to something, but it may be erroneous. Then let's just go down the list one at a time here. Limit, calc, start, and end time. This is like a start and end time in the rest of our product in that you can put in a fixed time or a fixed date and time, or you can put in a reference to a variable time, like a dynamic time using an interface. So what you'd want to have as a result in each of these fields is a start and end time. And what you, what you want in this 
uh, in these two fields is the bracketing of when that process was in a golden batch or in, in, in particularly good control. So when you were making a really good product, you can go back to that time. And if you've got that data in a historian or in a database, you can say, use whatever is in that database between these two times. And that will be the basis for my calculation of all my limits. That makes sense? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then what are those limits? Those limits are the lower control limit, the upper control limit, uh, and the center line. Now, each of those can be, as always with our software, each of those can be overridden and you can put in your own known lower control limit, upper control limit, and center line. If you know the fixed values, or maybe you've done an offline study and you know what your process capability is, uh, and as a result, you'll know these three numbers and you'll be able to uh, do put them in here. If you don't know these three numbers, but you want to calculate them, well, you can tell us using an interface where to go find the lower control limit that's being dynamically calculated outside of Visual KPI or the center line or the upper control limit. So you have total control over how these are calculated either directly or by leaving them blank and specifying a start and end time in the limit calcs, we'll calculate them for you or by leaving them all blank we'll use whatever the screen time range is on the displayed chart. So if you open up a one week trend, we'll use one week worth of data to calculate the lower control limit, upper control limit, and center line. Great, so let's go look at one of these. Let me grab the mouse if I could, Michael, and Please. we'll take a look here. I've got one on the screen here. So let's open that one. And maybe give us a tour of what it looks like on the end, on the end result. So what we've got here is an a SPC chart with the actual value shown in blue. You see all the process limits have been suppressed because they're not part of this particular chart. Uh, in this case, I believe that the chart is getting its limits recalculated based on what's on the screen. So that means a week's worth of data is going into calculating what's going on. And it also is, is the case where this one has only two of the four rules that are implemented. The four out of five greater than one sigma and the nine that are on the same side of the center line. And every time there's a violation, you can see that there is a dot that colors where that violation occurred. So yeah, let me, uh, so you have- This process, uh, by the way, is wildly yeah, yeah. out of control. That's right. Yeah. And this is more of a demo KPI here, yeah. but let's take a quick tour around a couple of things here. In the bottom in the legend, you'll see the two rules that are enabled here. You can turn on and turn those off by just clicking on them. You can also see what all those calculated limits are. And then you can see over here the normal KPI limits. And if you want to just enable some things, you can turn off SPC up here. Now you have just the actual value going across of a trend. And you can turn on the KPI limits, in this case, just some fixed static KPI limits in this one. Uh, again, turn them off and turn on the SPC rules. And as always, you can turn on and turn off each one of these uh, you want. Anything else you'd add to, to the visual aspect of an SPC trend, Michael? Uh, not really. I mean, you would expect to see a lot less violations than we're seeing here. But of course, this is one of those uh, random signal generators that's instead of a real process and instead of a real laboratory, which we don't have uh, built next to Transparis headquarters, uh, we're using a, a simulator. So it's giving a lot of uh, a lot of noise. And, you know, I would fire the lab manager that's running this process and, and get somebody in that can run it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all I, I can say about the visual part. I mean, all these represent chances to alert people as well. So when, when violations occur, you can choose to alert on those uh, limit violations and send somebody a notification, which will include a link back to this SPC chart. Perfect. So I think that's a <clears throat> good summary of SPC trends. Again, it's the 80-20 rule with Transpara where we're doing 80% of what most people need or what most people need in general for SPC but set up in just minutes, rapidly calculated, not requiring a dedicated piece of software um, and a huge project to implement. And then a lot of flexibility and obvious control and, and status on the user experience.